And welcome back to Comic Frontline, everybody. I am Brant Fowler, a.k.a. The Gonzo Goose, back with you for another comic review. This time we're talking X-Men Gold, issue number six. This is titled Techno Superior Part 3. On the cover, we have Mutant X Machina, it says. This is written by Mark Guggenheim with uh, pencils by R.B. Silva, inks by uh, Adriana D. Benedetto. And uh, colors by Frank Martin and Andrew Crossley. Letters by BC's Corey Petit. All right. So this story, of course, picks up where the last one left off. You've got this whole nanotech um, swarm, uh, you know, floating around the entire uh, all Manhattan. And all the heroes are fighting it. And I have to say that the one cool thing about this, this particular issue is that it felt... Um, it had that big, big fight feel, that epic feel. Um, even though it's not an event book, it felt like an event book because you didn't only have the X-Men fighting the Swarm. You had Daredevil, you had Deadpool, you had Miss Marvel, you had Captain Marvel. Uh, you had all these different heroes fighting this Swarm together. Hulk was there. Um, you know, Amadeus Cho Hulk. They were all fighting together uh, trying to defeat this thing. And, you know, even the cuckoos were there. And it, it was just crazy. It, it had this big fight epic feel to it. And I thought that was really cool. Um, the the cover where it says Mutant X Machina, that's very fitting as to how this all wraps up this fight, at least for now, uh, with Rachel Gray kind of coming into her own. And that's kind of what this issue was all about. She was knocked out basically in a coma. They couldn't wake her up. Uh, Dr. Reyes was there trying to work with her and, and she couldn't figure it out and all through the issue we're seeing flashes of Rachel uh, her mind as you know I guess her mind is trying to convince her that there's more to her than that and it was uh, it was showing her it would form like constructs in her mind of her mother Jean Grey and her father Scott Summers and you know other people throughout trying to tell her that she's afraid to become all that she can be and it had nothing to do with the Phoenix Force it had to do with what was inside Rachel Gray um, and this next level I, I guess mutation that she's gonna have to go through or that she came through in this issue uh, but it, it was really interesting to see that development it was a little fast a little rushed I'll, I'll admit um, getting to that point from her coma to accepting that she's got to become this this next level um, of whatever you know being that she is and you know then of course ending the battle um, but beautiful artwork here I have to say I love the style of art in this book there were like these I mean these fight scenes in the city of Manhattan were just like there was like big splash pages and the art, the way it was, there was like thick lines around all the characters. The background, uh, you know, was there with all the rubble and all the, you know, powers going here and there and explosions and everything. And it looked really cool. And then you had these thick outlines on the characters that just made them pop right out of the page at you. The colors, uh, you know, were really sharp, um, you know, kind of in your face. And it kind of pushed the, the figures forward as well. Uh, just brilliantly... Uh, laid out artistically I, I loved it um, writing wise like I said it felt a little rushed but at the same time you had you know you had some development like I said this was mainly Rachel Gray's story but you also had this little moment with Storm and Gambit where they actually spoiler alert they actually kissed and we don't know what that means uh, but it, it got Gambit to think about things differently because he was blaming himself and you know kind of really coming down on himself and she convinced him hey you're a hero you know stop whining and get to it and basically and that's that's something that storm would do i don't the kiss was a little out of left field but you know maybe it was just to say hey you know just snap out of it kind of thing i don't know um maybe they're building something there i guess we'll have to see and i have to spoil this a little bit at the very end after they after rachel gray has come out of this thing and she's uh, dispersed um, this nanotech cloud with her psychic powers because it, it's open to psychic attacks but it takes its toll it, it disperses and they're cleaning up and everything and then we see this girl pick up this this stuffed animal and you see the face of, of the nanotech storm of this sentinel AI um, in the in the gutter 
uh, kind of staring out from the sewers or whatever. Uh, you know, so we know it's not over. But the, the interesting thing is this girl, and I don't know, maybe it was just a coincidence. Maybe it was foretelling um, because we know this is coming back this series. But it looked a lot like a certain runaway who happens to be a mutant. And so it's very interesting. Um, this whole story is based on, you know, because this, this Sentinel AI is, is trying to weed out all genetic mutations, which basically is everyone on the planet um, because we all have these genetic mutations. And it talked about evolving and they pointed out the irony that, hey, evolution is a genetic mutation. Um, so it, it was just, I thought it was brilliantly uh, written, just a little rushed and beautiful artwork. This issue was better than the last two issues for me. Uh, you know, I thought the first four or three issues were really strong and then four kind of dipped off for me a little bit. Last issue picked up a little bit and then this one is uh, back on track for me. I thought it was fantastic. Um, so I, I'm going to give this one uh, a solid four and a half. I thought it was that good. Uh, like I said, I have to take a half point off for rushing that whole thing. And, and you know, they, they played their hand. They said right on the cover, Mutant Ex Machina. So we knew there was going to be a Deuce Ex, Mach Deuce Ex Machina to, to take this out. And that was Rachel Gray. So at least they were bold enough to say, hey, this is what's going to happen. Uh, so I, I appreciated that. Um, so there you go. Four and a half stars out of five. Four, X-Men Gold, number six. And if you like this review give it a thumbs up if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel already please do so please leave a comment below let me know what you thought of this issue i'd love to hear your thoughts if you agree or disagree with me um you know if you like the direction of the book and so on and so forth uh, as for me you can also find me on my channel brant fowler and on twitter and facebook all brant fowler and you can find me on lastemberpress.com zone4podcast.com uh, what the card occasionally, and of course, right here on Comic Frontline. And with any luck, I will actually be back on the live show this this coming Tuesday. So uh, tune in for that as we talk about our top fives and worst picks and all that other fun stuff this coming Tuesday uh, right here on Comic Frontline. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.